Good morning, Year 6. Hope you're all keeping well. This is Chapter 7. The sun had set and the moon was just beginning to rise in the sky when Ma and Ba returned home from the fields. Even though they could smell the steam from the rice cooking, they noticed the house was strangely dark and quiet. Why is Minley sitting in the darkness? Ma wondered as they approached the house. Perhaps she's sad about giving up her goldfish, Ba said as he shook his head. Can our fortune be any poorer, Ma sighed. We cannot even feed a goldfish for our daughter. But as Minley's parents entered the house and read her note, Ma made the noise like a shrieking cat. I spoke too soon, Ma cried. Our fortune is now the worst, for our only daughter is gone. Quiet, quiet wife, Ba hushed her. If we move quickly, we can find her and bring her back home. Ba hurriedly took out his cloth sack and gathered blankets and filled an empty bottle with water. She's had almost half a day to travel ahead, he said. It might take us some time to find her. Ma watched him and then began to pack the cooked rice into a travelling box. But she continued to weep. It's all the stories you told her, Ma sobbed. She believed them and now is looking for fairy tales. Her words cut into Bar like slices from a knife. But even though his face was pained, he said nothing and continued to pack. His hands trembled as he tied the bag closed. But they were gentle when he put them on Ma's shoulders. Let us go, he said. As they left the house, many of their neighbours poked their heads out of their doors. They'd heard Ma's scream through the thin walls of their closely spaced houses and wanted to know what had happened. When Ma and Ba told them, it seemed as if the whole village poured out from their homes. Never-ending mountain? The old man of the moon? Changing your fortunes? The neighbours said. You better go find her or she will never return. Foolish Mindy! She's trying to do the impossible. Each villager pointed and nodded towards the direction they had seen Minley last. Some had seen her heading home, others toward the rice fields. But finally, a small boy was heard. Minley left towards Fruitless Mountain, he said. I saw her with her pack. She went that way. So, with the villagers waving them goodbye, Ma and Ba walked towards Fruitless Mountain their dark shadows trailing behind them in the moonlight. But when they reached the mountain, they looked at each other uncertainly. Where did she go from here? Ba wondered, and he lit the lantern in his hand. The soft light seemed to warm the air and soften the growing darkness. Here! Ma cried out, pointing to the ground. There are footprints going toward the woods. Maybe they are Minlis. Ba looked at the footprints. There was another mark accompanying them. A long, pulling line. Ba pointed at them. But what is that? he wondered. Maybe Minley was dragging a walking stick, Ma said. The footprints could be hers. Ba looked again at the footprints. They seemed small and nimble. Perhaps they are, Ba said. Let's follow them. And so they did. <laughs>